he has a cache of books very good and they start to read i mean they they're acting like they don't know what to do with these books right Okay, go to the bottom of page 65, Mildred, right? Ooh, don't we love Mildred? We love her. Right. She gives me nightmares. Anytime I have my, my, my AirPods in my ears and I'm like kind of like disconnected from the world, it scares me because I don't want to be Mildred ever. Could we easily become Mildred? Yeah, look at us caring about things that really don't matter, right? She's like, I need my fourth wall. No lady, you need to eat <laughs> and stop taking those pills. Mildred, all kinds of issues with her. She needs some, she needs a hug. I think Mildred needs a hug. I think Mildred needs some human contact. Mildred needs a hug. Okay, let's go to the bottom of page 65. So he starts reading, right? Thing doesn't make sense at all, right? And Mildred says, and then Mildred sat across the hall from him. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. The captain was right. Here now, said Montag, we'll start over again at the beginning. Da na na na, right? They start reading the book. He totally drags him, drags Mildred down with him. And he's like, tough, we're going to read. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, that was my childhood. My mom made me read. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's where we're at. I've gone over section one of Fahrenheit. We've mentioned the, the most important parts. There are definitely other parts that are important, right? The minor details of how big the, um, those boards on the highway are, 200 feet long, right? People live a really fast life. They don't even know what it's like to walk in grass, right? And then there's Mildred, who is the end result of the type of life that's in this dystopian novel. All right, let's move on. Okay, hey, get, back, get back into your canvas and then I'm gonna push you guys forward. I need to take a commercial break. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Here at um, Amazon Prime, you too can order one, two, three, four, five, five sieves for Christmas. So what we have here is we have part two of Fahrenheit. You're gonna start on page 67 this today, actually. So what I did was I, I just like pinched a, a picture of what a sieve looks like. We're gonna bring it all the way back to my first um, beach kit. You know, that one that was in that plastic bag or that plastic, yeah, right? And then you had one of these sieves and, and you would like, go to Onikahakaha and, sh and shake the sand to find like, I don't know what, shells and stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about? You guys have those all plastic, right? Nothing was recycled, right? Um, um, the question and the reason why I gave you a picture is because this thing is very interesting, right? The sieve and the sand. Um, the question that should be at the front of your, your head as you're reading section two or part two is this. What does the sieve and the sand have to do with Fahrenheit 451? Okay, these are symbols of something. Okay, maybe you can figure that out as you're reading. Okay, um, if you guys look at the reading schedule. So this week, what we have here is we have you guys reading. You have three membean sessions as required this week. They're not extra credit, but if you look at the following week, I'm going to give it for extra credit again. The irony in you guys, you guys are crazy. When I give it for extra credit, then everybody does membean. And when I give it for regular credit, you know, oh, who's that? Is that your little brother? 
Yeah. Oh, that's Sienna's little brother. You're at her house? Where's she? She's in um, the other room? She is downstairs because the Wi-Fi was bad up here. Oh my gosh. You guys related or something? I wish she was in my class. I wish she was in our class. Whatever. Okay, so what she we have- She honors and does not enjoy it. We'll tell her to work hard. All right, so what we have here is we have the reading is up to page 106. You got us, tell Cece, I say hi. Yeah, we miss her. Okay, um, remember these pages fly by real quickly if you notice, yes, just nod. Just pretend like they fly, fly by quickly. But re I mean, like really this book is a giant book and there's choked room. So think about it as reading about 35 pages versus like whatever it is. All righty, let's move on. Go to the next part in the next module. So you guys need to follow directions. Let's go ahead and get in our notebooks and write this at the top. Um, when I asked you guys to take pictures of your notebooks, I really mean that. I don't want you to type in your work. And there's a reason. We're trying to activate different parts of our brain so this week, also, you're going to be adding in pictures. So anybody want to continue your um, post-it note notes, your post-it ones? If you want to keep doing the post-it note thing, go ahead. That's kind of fun. Hi, Blaze. How's lunch? Good? Drop some off, man. I'm hungry. OK, so I need you guys to take a picture of your notebook and submit it. Five, only five, okay, only five. Five important quotes. Also, I need to see a range of memorable quotes. Some of you guys acted like you only read the first 10 pages. Okay, I need to see a range. Yes, La Akea. If we hit five by like the first couple of pages, can we just put more? Oh, you know, it's like going out with people. You got to be selective. You know, you got to like, mm, yeah, you can just we just be friends. You know, like you can be friends with that quote, but then you need to move on and see like there's other quotes that may have not been the best metaphor to use, but analogy to use. But I mean, if you hit five, then go for broke, right? Then you think, I mean, this book is beautiful, beautifully written as well. Okay, so you probably want to write more than five. That's where possibly extra credit comes into play, right? So some of you guys have gotten, have earned extra credit points, right? And I think you guys all know, I'm the extra credit fairy queen, right? I like to give sprinkles of extra credit points and they're not even a big deal, right? And one or two points extra credit, but that's to tell you that I appreciate and mahalo you guys for doing your very best and going above and beyond, right? Some of you guys, and I see you guys, right, have gotten those extra credit points. And that's just a little like mahalo gift from me, okay? And hopefully it motivates you to continue to do well. All right, I got to remind you guys of a couple of things. The first, the, the first thing is how you guys cite your page numbers with your direct quotes. It was all kinds of wrong going on, right? Direct quote, right, in quotation marks, then the number in parentheses, please stop writing PG period or page, and then the number. Stop doing that. You guys are driving me crazy. And then put the period at the end after the last parentheses. I gave you an example, okay? I'm gonna write you a stink email if you guys don't do that correctly, right? And the next thing is when you examine the quote for its importance, you can even ask a question. Also add some pictures. For your memorable quotes, yes, five. Remember, but we've been selective, right, Lakia? We're not like, you know, we can be friends with other quotes, that's fine, okay? All right, we good on this? I want to see a picture. Submit a picture of your ugly handwriting. I don't care. We embrace all types of handwritings. Moving on. 
Easy, 10 points, because you got to do the work. Okay, here we go. So we're going to end class today with this. Um, let's go ahead and copy my ugly handwriting now. Okay, in your tablets, we are going to be building an argument. We're going to argue that in section two, this is the new cautionary tale of the second part. So go ahead, make this nice and big. This is this will be um, pasted into your Google Doc um, that you're submitting for this week's response question. Okay, write nice and big. Um, so if you look, you can see kind of the sequence, yeah? Number one, you're gonna state the main idea. Can you guys write tag next to the main idea? T-A-G, tag, title, author, genre, so that we remember. Because we're talking about Fahrenheit 451, make sure it's italicized and not in quotation marks. We're still doing that wrong, guys. So you're gonna to have to pick a cautionary tale based off of section two. As you move on into the sequence of, um, I guess your train of thought, number two, you're gonna be providing a piece of evidence that supports your main idea. Notice the parenthetical notation, that's where the page number lives and dies, all right? Number three, you're going to elaborate on why that direct quote, that piece of evidence supports what you're trying to say. Number four is moving on to the counter argument. So we want to practice using a counter argument. One could argue that what, right? So what does a counter argument do? Anybody know? What's the role of it? It disputes the other person's argument. Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, I like that word. It disputes, but it also acknowledges, yeah, that you're not just a one-sided type of person. Oh, in that context. Right, right. So the counter argument is like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I understand why you're voting for him, right? Nevertheless, right? Mm -hmm. I left, the, I left the name out. I'm just pointing that out, by the way. So the counter argument, okay, and I, add that to your notes, okay, that the counter argument acknowledges, right? It provides a balanced attack, right? So here you go with my really lame example. So if I were to back this up and talk about this from section one, right? The first part you guys read. I could say that the cautionary tale, so in my main idea would be um, overuse of technology, right? How technology disconnects us from reality, something like that, right? That would be my main idea, right? Evidence number one, I would probably grab that quote from when um, Mildred is asking for her fourth wall, right? Or, or when she says she loves her family. Ooh, I don't think you're there yet. Sorry, spill the beans. Then I would elaborate and say that um, because Mildred is bugging guy about wanting to purchase the fourth wall so that her basically her life could be complete right then what right so elaborate on the importance of the the direct quote so here's the counter argument number four you're going to bring in an outside article to help argue right because you want to at least acknowledge that yeah the naysayers will say this right so the counter argument I'd find from blah, blah, blah article would say that technology actually is advancing the human race. 
now more than ever, humans are have more access to knowledge or facts or right you can just it's at the it's at our fingertips right we can just look up stuff number five is where you bust out your perspective okay so number five nevertheless let's add in a couple more transitions you could possibly use right like although however albeit right i like that one that's a fancy, yeah, I'll be it. What would I, how would I argue that, right? You could say what, right? Right, one could argue that technology is advancing the human race. And I'm gonna come back and say, nevertheless, are we really advancing, right? When people are so glued to their phones that they walk across a busy street and get run over right? Nevertheless, what, right? So I'm arguing my point. Okay, you guys understand? I gave you a really lame example. Then you're going to conclude it by wrapping it up. Okay, so your final thought, make sure that it's on point. Okay, some of you guys have been writing some really um, chicken skin conclusions. Like you're not only wrapping it up, you are giving a final thought that makes me want to like extend my thinking after. Okay. And that's the whole point to the conclusion. Okay. Like this, right? After all, do we really want to become Mildred? Right. Or after all, what? I reject the idea of Mildred. Something. I don't know. All right, so there's your prompt. It's in bold, right? What is the cautionary tale of this week's reading from Fahrenheit 451, right? In italics because it's the entire book. I'm going to use a counter argument to help explain why you have identified a warning for today's society. Look up an article that helps provide a counter argument. And there you go with your outline-ish, okay? One thing I want you to do is click on the link to the transitions. Everybody go do that. I'm gonna have you pull a transition that you have never used before. So let's go all the way down to where you find opposition, limitation, contradiction. Everybody see that? Okay, now look at that, right? We're not gonna use like on the other hand, right? We're, we've grown from that. We, we, we took off the training wheels. So when you look through the opposition, limitation, contradiction, list of transitions, go ahead and in the chat, copy and paste one that you'll probably use because you've never used it before and you think it sounds, uh, actually sounds really good. Conversely, nice. Right, so one thing that's great about your writing is that's not how you talk in real life. So you can kind of be more of an intellect as you write. I'll be it. Thank you, Ava. I really appreciate that. We should just try try and use albeit um, throughout our day today, right? Because it's like an although, right? Nevertheless, although yep, yeah. sounds a bit a little funny. Yeah totally does but when you're watching like the news like people will use albeit just a different word to use we're just trying to stretch our vocabulary our lexicon you guys know what a lexicon is yeah do you in spite of the lexicon is your personal bank of vocabulary it's in the back over here. Do you have a big lexicon? It's like in the back over here. Blaze, I'm joking. I don't mean to. I'm just messing with you. Okay. Yeah, that's what a lexicon is. Do you have a... I don't know what you want to say. A wide variety. Do you have this higher level of language within your lexicon? Right. I don't got that. You don't got that? 
Girl, every week you just get one more in there and be fine. Maintaining and learning. All right, very good. Thank you for not using, what is the lame one? Mm. But instead, I mean, whereas is, is pretty good too. Oh, yeah. Um, however is okay. Yeah. Anybody going to use notwithstanding? No. Regardless. Anybody use regardless? Not everybody. Expansive leprechaun. Yes. Not everybody put their, hey, I need everybody to participate. Find your transition word for your counter argument. Kai, where's yours? Nonetheless. Kai didn't offer up a transition. He just offered up a comment. Awesome. Kai. You, right, La Kea. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that at all. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so everybody understand. Let's go back to our canvas so that we're clear so that everybody earns their points for this week. So in red, it says under your paragraph, paste your notebook, um, paste your notebook graphic organizer. So this thing that you copied and you made beautiful and you plugged in the things, make sure you copy and paste that underneath, okay? If you don't, then I might, I'm going to minus points. Yes? Um, does it have to have our information inside of the bubbles? Or does it just have to? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why you did that. If not, then we would have just drawn animals or something. Okay. A group of animals. Could we um, like write it down and then like circle the stuff? Because like, I know mine's was not going to fit in all of them oh they just but notes like, it's just up to you trini trinity and kai stop talking schmack to each other thank you yeah apale if you want to just like redo it that's fine if your ocd is strong today you do you okay all right any questions kai do you have a question my Wi-Fi is not that great. Anybody? Wait, I have a question. Okay. I'm like confused now. Yes. What paragraph? Oh, wait. Oh, you know, you're going to answer the question, what is the cautionary tale of this oh, okay. week's Yeah. Never mind. You got it? Good question. Anybody else? Confused? No? Okay. Alrighty, we are going to end class a little bit early as promised so that you can start reading. Not texting each other, reading. No excuses. If anybody needs to stay back to talk about things, dealing with school, then stay on. But other than that, go and read, take your notes, be joyful. Let's see what happens tomorrow. You guys gotta pay attention, okay? because it's gonna, you're gonna remember this like maybe for the rest of your life tomorrow, okay? Pay attention, let's talk about it next week. Okay, bye. Hi, you guys good? La Kea. I have one question. Okay. About our memorable quotes. Yes. So you said that you wanted us to write it down on paper and then yeah. take a picture and put it into the slides. Uh, no, just take a picture and submit it to that oh, assignment. Okay. So yeah. For the for the for the chapter one slides. 
there the, was like the, the picture one and picture two thing yeah was that supposed to were we supposed Pictures. to take a picture of our member yeah remember oh. we set it up in our notebook and then okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, i think you were typing or something i don't know what you're yeah i did do you want me to edit that and... oh gosh no just okay. move on okay. okay okay how you doing you good Thank you. i'm good good how are yeah. you i'm great i'm great um yeah so let's go ahead um and get some of the reading done and then just take notes. I don't care. I appreciate all handwritings. Okay. 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 Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Have a nice day. You too.